let's get on with it. Um, okay. Sorry, I'm just going to try and hide that. Okay, right. Thank you, Alicia. Um, so I've been invited to talk to you today about my ideas on how schools should engage with their PTA, as well as some things they should avoid doing. As Alicia said, my background's in IT, and I was once a valued member of the workforce running a mobile apps business. Then my daughter, who's now 14, came along and duly started at the local preschool in Chilbolton. One fateful evening, I went along to the AGM, and after being plied by PIMS, I found myself voted in as the chair of the preschool. Since then, I've been part of the PTA for Stroud School in Romsey for several years. I've been heavily involved in Trojans Hockey Club, even though I still don't know the rules, and I'm now on the PTA at King Edward VI School in Southampton. And because of my background in IT, I just can't help myself from setting up systems at the schools for things like accounting, ticket sales, and online shops for uniform and kit. And finally, I'm currently spending my time working at the Wessex Heartbeat Charity down in Southampton and rebuilding their website to save them lots of money. And I'm also implementing a back-end CRM and finance tool. So a little bit about me. So moving swiftly on. Okay, so I'm speaking purely from my experience of volunteering for school PTAs, and I'm going to give you some ideas on how to help your school's PTA be as accessible as possible. I'm going to talk about the importance of having a clear purpose for the PTA so that everybody knows where they're bothering. Then I'll cover my ideas on how the school can support the PTA with their efforts in their areas like to raise money, to build a community through social events, and to improve their communication with parents. I've also got some suggestions on how you can help your PTA stay happy and sustainable rather than overworked and grumpy. And finally, I'll talk about how critical it is to celebrate their successes and to say thank you for their hard work. This is often overlooked and it does go a long way to explaining why it can get hard to recruit volunteers. Okay. Okay, so I thought we would actually just discuss briefly what the purpose of a PTA is. Um, I think it's really important to start by understanding what your school wants from its PTA. Every school is different in terms of its size, the level of parent engagement and its financial needs. But here are the four most common activities carried out by PTAs in my experience. So most schools want to raise some extra money for projects which aren't covered by school fees. That could be anything from new playground equipment to a new swimming pool. Running social events can be a great way to raise money, but they also help to build positive relationships between parents and staff. We've really noticed the impact of COVID on our social scene at my schools, and we're having to work really hard to build it back up again. And social events that we're running are really trying to help with that. Building a strong school community has loads of benefits. Better communication at the school leads to happier parents, and happier parents are really good at marketing their schools by word of mouth. I know we chose our school after hearing some really lovely things about its family feel from a neighbour of ours. Giving parents a voice, that might sound like a really scary prospect, but a group of really well-informed parents can help the school. Class reps can stop many WhatsApp grumblings with some proper information that they've got direct from their recent meeting with the head. Equally, a group of trusted reps can act as a filtered parent voice. This can help the school become aware of what parents are actually concerned about, allowing sub problems to be addressed early on. Our active parents also save countless emails a day to the school office from those slightly less organised parents asking about whether clubs are on or whether it's non-uniform day tomorrow. So I think it is really important to have a strong PTA. OK, assuming that you agree and your school does actually want to have a PTA, I'll carry on. As a school, I think you need to work with the PTA to clearly define its mission. Without a mission, it's really difficult for the PTA to know where to focus their efforts. When I joined the PTA a number of years ago, the focus at the time was on raising money for charity. Quite a few people asked why we were doing that, and it turned out that this was actually just the personal view of the chair of the PTA at that time. And most other parents and staff felt actually we should be focusing on raising money for projects at the school. The problem was that the head hadn't built a decent relationship with the PTA, 
meaning that nobody really knew what was wanted by the school and they were just doing their own thing. As a new committee, we sat down with the head and talked about what we felt the PTA, what, what we all felt the PTA should be doing. And we also went and surveyed parents and some of the teachers, and we came up with our mission statement for our school. And that was just to offer a range of social events to help build a strong community, whilst also raising some money for specific projects where they were needed. But the events weren't all about making money. So I think some of the questions that schools should be asking themselves are, do you actually need or want to raise money from these events? If you do, does the school need to benefit or charities or a bit of both? You know your parents and how they feel about these things. And if you don't, you should talk to them about it. If you don't actually want to raise the money, then you should consider running events at cost price. That makes it as accessible as possible to parents and staff, rather than always trying to make a profit on things. You might just find that more parents attend if it's run at cost price. You can also, in those circumstances, help take some weight off the PTA volunteers by helping them to outsource events to professionals so that everybody can have a nice time. I've spent too many mornings clearing up after a massive event at school with a shocking hangover. We quickly realised it would be a good idea to pay some of the school catering and cleaning teams to help us. And we also had a revelation that employing some sixth formers to run the bar meant we could actually have a nice time too. As a school, you should also consider the fact that lots of parents might want to donate to projects benefiting the school, but just aren't willing or able to attend an event or give up their time to help. Offering easy ways for them to donate money shouldn't be frowned upon, as people are just so busy, but many feel guilty for not helping. And I know for a fact that it does help assuage their guilt if they can just throw a bit of money at the problem. Okay, when you're looking at social events, you do need to think about what's best for your school community and different schools are very different. We can easily get over a hundred people to attend an event at our small prep school, but we only manage 65 at our much larger senior school. We've been much more successful at the senior school by working with year reps to run some smaller get togethers in particular towns for particular year groups. And personally, I think it's easier to turn up to an event near your house where you know everybody will be from your year group rather than turning up to a large event where you might not know anybody and you don't really know who to start talking to. Um, it's also quite daunting for some families to find the money to attend a large ball when you factor in the cost of the tickets, the drinks, the taxi and the babysitters. And you might turn up and actually only know a few people. Finally, I think you need to consider your parent body and whether you have enough people willing and able to donate the amount of time needed to run PTA events. It might actually be much fairer for the school to take the lead and to outsource some things so as not to ask too much of a few parents like me. Okay. Okay, so I just wanted to talk about um, fundraising. So. Over the years, quite a few parents have asked me why we need to fundraise for school at all. It's a fee paying school, surely they can buy whatever it is they need. So it's therefore key for the school and the PTA to set some specific and measurable goals for the next few years. The single most important thing that I, as a PTA member, want from my schools is a costed wish list. So the PTA can focus their fundraising efforts. They can justify the ticket prices and they can easily answer the what's it in aid of question. My schools honestly have tended to be hopeless at this over the years and it's so frustrating. People ask us why we're charging £50 for a ticket and often we don't know what we're raising the money for. I think ideas need to be gathered from teachers, pupils and parents and then the head should prioritise them and agree the list with the PTA. And the wish list then should be shared with all the parents so everybody can buy into the plans. You'll have lots of opinions from lots of different people, but if people feel like they've been involved, they will get behind it more. It's also just really critical that PTA funds are only spent with the approval of the PTA. There's an outdoor xylophone at my school, which we apparently paid for, but we didn't actually know about it until it had been installed. We would probably have prioritised some other projects before this particular one. 
Equally though, the PTA has in the past bought some completely random things for the school that they didn't really want. And the wish list is the only way to avoid this happening. So please work with the PTA to build one. And once you've created the wish list, it's really important that you keep the parents up to date on progress towards those targets by communicating. We've done some simple things recently, like ordering a large presentation check. And we use that for photos wherever we can, particularly when we make a big donation. Um, you can also ask the art department or some creative teacher to help make a Blue Peter style totalizer for progress against some larger projects. At my school, we're cur currently raising money randomly for a very large composter. One of the teachers created this funky compostometer to display progress, which the kids absolutely love. You should also share photos of all the items purchased by the PTA, just to publicize their successes. Um, it just helps people understand what the point of it all is and makes them realise that the reason why they went and bought a ticket to that event was to buy this particular climbing frame for early years. So please share it. Okay. Right. Your PTA hopefully has already got loads of ideas about events they can run to raise funds and there are loads of online resources to help them. My suggestion is that schools need to work with the PTA to choose the best types of events for their particular school. Also, considering the size of the committee is key. I've had years where I've organised a Christmas fair, an Easter egg hunt, a champagne supper, a comedy night and served pims at two sports days, all with a committee of just five people and three of them never turned up. It was just too much to ask of such a small group. Also, you must consider whether your events are inclusive for as much of the school community as possible. The committee may well be made up of a group of friends who enjoy a drink and a boogie, but many parents won't enjoy parent boozy evenings, so you do need to encourage the PTA to offer alternatives. When I think about the pros and cons of the different types of events I've been involved in, the balls and the Christmas parties with sit-down meals have been the most work with the biggest outlay and the biggest cost for parents to attend. We've usually only made profit on the auction element of those events or the raffle. Some of the other less formal events are much easier to run with barn dancing quizzes, barn dances, quizzes, comedy nights. They've all got slightly less emphasis on alcohol, so it can be a bit more inclusive. We also find that parents are more confident to come along to an event that's got something like a quiz. Um, if they don't many other, know many other people in their year group, it's a little bit less daunting to turn up to. My personal uh, favourite event is the Easter egg hunt, mainly because it's really easy to organise. Whole families come along and eat cake and eat chocolate. And sometimes it's the first time parents and grandparents get to have a good look around the school grounds. We always get really positive feedback and some lovely photographs for the school Twitter feed. Just shows that you don't always have to have a huge event to build some real social benefits. Schools can really help the PTA with their events. One of the key ways to do this is to advertise the events using the usual communication channels. It's so easy for you to put things on social media, into newsletters, and weekly emails um, to save the PTA trying to print out flyers to put in book bags, which I've done in previous years. Um, it's really important to build that relationship between the marketing team or whoever manages the social media and the PTA to make sure that you get what you need in advance to be able to put it onto the, um, onto the various channels. And just remember that PTAs may well not know what sort of size of assets they need to create to put on Facebook. So please give them help with those things. And finally, on this events topic, schools really need to help ensure that events are scheduled properly to avoid clashes with other things. It's no fun trying to set up the dining room for a comedy night while the boys are being served matched tea in their rugby kit, I can assure you. So please be there with the PTA with a school calendar to make sure that doesn't happen. Okay, the social benefits of PTAs are key in my opinion. They really do make the school a great place to be part of. And they make it really easy as a parent to talk positively about the school to other prospective families. I do think so much uh, school choice comes down to talking to other parents at, at various schools. A great PTA helps parents get to know each other and for them to get to know the staff. 
And these relationships can go a really long way towards improving parent support for events, which in turn makes them more successful. It's much easier to go to an event with people that you know than if you turn up on your own. They also make communication between parents and the school much easier and more positive. It's much easier to have an important conversation with a teacher if you already have a positive relationship with them. They just make the school a happier place to be as well. Um, you know, smiling faces at drop off and pick up at our school. It's a really lovely place. On top of that, networking at our schools has helped parents to find jobs my, my husband and I have both found jobs through school. Uh, we've employed people through school and we've found suppliers through school as well. So it's just benefits within the community. Um, and it's also helped parents to be able to supply their skills to help the school. So for example, one of our grandparents owns a heat pump company and they helped improve the efficiency of the school swimming pool, saving them lots of money. We also have a local VW dealer who's always happy to sponsor our Santa's Grotto. And he recently brought along a range of electric cars to support our recent Green Day. Now, schools can really help to build these relationships simply by providing opportunities for parents to socialise. And I know this does depend on the particular school, but at my school, it works really well because the school allows us to have a coffee at school after drop off every day of the week. Um, we know we've got to clear out by half past nine, but it's, it's just a really nice um, idea. Also, adding a social aspect to school events can be really useful and easy, like offering a glass of wine after parents' evenings um, when they're in person. These allow people to meet each other, and it's very little effort for people to put these things on. Also, I am a big fan of subsidising staff tickets to social events. It can really help encourage staff to attend. Um, and help build those relationships between staff and, and parents. And I know staff can be really nervous about attending a parent social event because they just assume they're going to be bombarded with questions by other parents. But actually we haven't found that's the case at all and it's a much more relaxed affair. Um, the school inviting the PTA to collaborate with staff at school events can help avoiding a them and us mentality. We've tried to do this at school by selling pims at sports day. We've run a joint green day fair. We've run the barbecue at the cricket festival. And often we're just simply around at new parent mornings and presentations. And it's up to the school really to invite us to those. Otherwise we wouldn't know they existed. I'd also really recommend asking senior staff to attend sports events, just fixtures on an afternoon or on a Saturday. And that's not only just to support the children in their sporting endeavours, but also a great opportunity to chat to parent supporters. The parents who make the effort to get to school on a, rain, on a rainy Wednesday afternoon are definitely prime candidates for the PTA. You should also encourage your staff to get involved by coming up with ideas, volunteering to go in the stocks, running a stall and so on. I've made friends with loads of teachers at school now. Um, and particularly now they realise I'm not just there to ask them about my children all the time. And we've had loads of fun running events together. It's really nice. Okay, next I wanted to focus on how important it is to recognise the value in having well-informed parents. The school office, as I've mentioned before, is spared so many phone calls and emails when you've got some really useful and supportive groups within your parent body. Your class or your year reps are the unsung heroes of the PTA. They're often not an official member of the committee, but can work really hard. Apart from organising gifts for teachers at Christmas, which is obviously a very useful job, they usually answer loads of questions every day from other parents, most of which are completely boring. And if you got those questions into your school office, you would go mad. In my experience, they're also brilliant at shutting down unfounded gossip and rumours. That's a silly example. Recently at our school, there was an upset when some parents got cross that the children no longer had fish on Fishy Fridays. Rumours were rife about cost cutting and reduced quality. Some parents knew from their kids that the catering team had surveyed the children and discovered that lots of the children actually hated Fishy Fridays. So they decided to reduce it to just twice a month. Once parents were told it had been a democratic decision by the children, they stopped moaning. 
This is just a simple kind of thing that schools sometimes forget to communicate to parents, but they can easily get ridiculously out of hand. You should therefore hold regular meetings with your class reps. I intended one this morning actually, and it did go on for two hours um, because we haven't had one since October. And I think the more regular, the better. The reps bill bring along the list of questions and concerns for the school. And it was our headmistress this morning. Um, and she tries to answer what she can there and then, or takes away the rest for, for action. She's often surprised by the things that we come up with that parents are asking because they just assume that we already know the answers to them. So it's, it's just a brilliant forum to improve those communications. I would suggest that you try and share some news or school plans with that particular group before telling the rest of the parent body just to make them feel a little bit special. It can also help to hear initial feedback from them on your plans, which might help you tune your messaging to everyone else. Sometimes you think you've answered all your FAQs, but we can come up with at least another 20 questions you haven't thought about. I would ask though that you are actually going to action the points raised during the meeting. Otherwise it can just be a pointless exercise and cause more frustration with the parents. And just a message here, don't forget to thank your class reps for everything they do. They do get forgotten sometimes. And I just wanted to touch on WhatsApp. We actually discussed this this morning at my school. It's really great for groups of friends, but when it's used for large groups of parents who don't really know each other, it can go very wrong. Class reps managing a WhatsApp group for a whole year group are acting as data controllers, but they've got no moderation tools to do that. They're actually close to being in breach of WhatsApp terms and conditions as well. I'm sure we all have some WhatsApp horror stories, but after a particularly nasty episode at our school involving parents complaining about teachers who were also parents in the group, we set up class list at school. This isn't a sales pitch for class list, but I would really recommend you looking at it with your PTA um, to see if it could work for your parents. It's GD GDPR compliant, which WhatsApp isn't, and it's much more inclusive because parents can sign up themselves rather than having to be invited using a mobile number. Their personal data is kept private and they can choose how much noise they want to receive from it. Plus, this is completely managed for, by parents for parents and the school staff can't see anything that's being discussed. However, the school can help with its uptake by suggesting to new parents that they sign up and they can be in charge of who's allowed in to ensure that only parents are on there, which obviously is very difficult to manage with WhatsApp. Our data team at school have access purely to do this. They approve new joiner requests and they move the, people, the children between classes over the summer holidays. School does need to actively work with the PTA to get class lists um, working. You could start by just posting reminders about non-uniform days on there and so on. And the more information you can start getting on there, the more people will start to use it and rely less on WhatsApp. And just my final point on this slide is the school can really help their class reps by working with them to build an FAQs page on your intranet or website or parent portal. Over time, it might just help people save lots of time answering the same question about where to pick the kids up from cricket club or which top they're supposed to wear for games today. Okay, sorry, there's lots of text on this slide. Basically, PTAs can have a bad reputation amongst parents and staff. Parents are terrified by the thought of being on a committee with annoying parents, open-ended responsibilities and badly run meetings. And schools must get frustrated by the PTA not following their processes like risk assessment, they forget to book car park attendance and they just want to borrow a cellar table all the time. And frankly, PTA volunteers get really fed up having to do everything. Schools can really help so much to build a happy and sustainable PTA. So the head needs to speak positively about the PTA wherever possible, especially to the younger year groups. That will help build awareness of what the team's doing, and that comes back to the wish list and what they've achieved. You can do things to make it easier for, for parents to volunteer as well. So we've recently started offering free childcare during PTA meetings at school just a few weeks ago, and it's been really appreciated by those with younger children. Um, school can also help um, build uh, sorry, be supportive of ideas to save effort for the PTA. So you could build a list of trusted suppliers for things like coffee vans, ice cream vans, bar staff, 
And that just takes the pressure off new committees having to find all that stuff out for themselves. You could also suggest running joint events with rather than just PTA only events and just suggest easier to run events. So some of the ideas we touched on earlier. And I've just listed some really simple things that can get overlooked. So please offer access to the school's resources to make the PTA's life a little bit easier, like your Zoom account, meeting rooms. Um, we had tea and coffee for the first time this morning, which is very exciting. Um, and it's much better than having to hang around in the car park. Please offer your PTA lots of storage as well. It's a constant problem at our school. Um, and I would ask you not to demolish their shed over the school holidays without telling them. Uh, let them use your school equipment, gazebos, speakers, offer them access to printing and laminating so they don't have to do it all at home on their temperamental inkjet printer and give them a regular slot in your newsletter and actively involve them in social media posts. I'm lucky because our head of marketing is a fellow year five parent who's always happy to help, but it hasn't always been that easy. I'd also ask that you get your staff to help the PTA. And one of the key ideas is your teachers, particularly in the younger years, can have a lot of face time with parents. That's a perfect opportunity to recruit potential class reps and PTA helpers. They're also a really good way of helping find potential PTA members with the right kind of personality. Teachers have warned us off potential recruits in the past based on what they know about the parents and how they think they might behave as part of a committee. It sounds awful, but it can be really hard to be on a committee with someone really bossy or someone who never lets anybody else speak. Um, having a PTA liaison member of staff is really useful as well. We have that at my senior school. It takes off so much pressure um, from the head and we miss having it at prep school. Um, and just some other ideas. If any of your team can help this committee. So, for example, the finance team could help the treasurer um, build up a, a system like free agent. Um, or teach them how to raise transactions if they have no financial background. The art department might be able to help build posters and social media banners, for example. And your, uh, your team could also help perhaps lead on risk assessments for people that have no idea what to do with them. IT team can help with other tools. I'll come on, I've got a quick slide on that in a second. Um, you can use your social media to promote and celebrate the PTA. And you could consider offering a member of staff or some older pupils to run the uniform shop. So it's really well at my prep school. It takes a lot of pressure off a small committee. Okay, um, this slide is just a bunch of pictures really. It's just to expand on my point earlier about IT. Technology can really help PTAs. And if they don't already use some of these things, they're really worth looking at. So we use Stripe for payment processing, um, classes for communication and ticket sales. Free agents comes free with a NatWest bank account and offers slightly more robust accounting than a spreadsheet. Um, Dropbox, Google Drive are great for file sharing. And we use Square um, to run free websites for our non-uniform shops, as well as using their contactless card readers to take payment at our uh, school events. They all work really well for us. Okay, last slide. It does seem really to be too easy for schools to forget to say thank you to the people who do work really hard for school as volunteers. When that happens, we do feel unappreciated and it can all get very bitter very easily. First, it's important to talk about the cele to celebrate the successes of the PTA. Use your newsletters and social media to talk about successful events and to share photos of things that have been funded by the PTA. You also have to remember that the volunteers might have put hours of work into planning an event. They've used the house to store hundreds of bottles of wine. They had to get ready in the school toilets for the event. And they spent the evening dealing with complaints from people who wanted a specific brand of sparkling water. And then they had to fill the dishwasher before they went home, very much the worse for wear. And they probably bought their ticket at full price too. There are some simple things you can do, which will go a long way to making them feel appreciated. And they might also persuade other parents that it could be worth helping out if they can get front seats at the carol service or the nativity plays. Some other really simple ideas to say thank you are personal Christmas cards from the head, um, just pointing out something in particular that person did that year, and just giving out some flowers at the end of year assembly to outgoing PTA members, or inviting the PTA to an occasional school lunch that not only says thank you, but it also helps other parents see the PTA is appreciated and might prompt them to volunteer. It's really exciting for smaller kids to see their parents involved at school and tends to lead to them being more helpful 
and joining in with things like the school council or the green team. And finally, it is just a matter of courtesy to reply to emails and to make an effort to chat and follow up on actions from meetings. If you don't do these things, the team feels really unappreciated and it creates more work for them to have to chase you. Okay, sorry, conscious of time. Last slide, quick summary. So in my view, the key things schools can do to get the most out of their PTA are to create and maintain a wish list so they know what they're doing. To talk about and promote the PTA, just to encourage other people to volunteer. Help the team choose the right events for your school. Work with your class reps to improve communication with parents. Offer school resources and staff to help wherever you can. Celebrate the successes of the PTA. And most importantly, please say thank you to them. Okay, that's everything from me.